up guys, I'm from BradyBiz.com. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use the EEPROM on the Arduino. Uh, the EEPROM enables you to save values and if the power is uh, removed from your system, you can read it back when the power comes back. So this is something that's very useful in many projects. So today we're gonna have a quick overview. We're gonna look at the code, we're gonna test it out, and then we'll be right back. All right, so let's have a quick look at the code we're going to use today. Uh, I'm including the fast LED at the beginning to control the ring of LEDs in this tutorial. And then the EEPROM library that we that is needed to read or write to the EEPROM memory on the Arduino. A uh, number of LEDs on the ring. The tag switch is connected to pin 4. The data pin of the ring is connected to pin 5 on the Nano. I'm using the tag switch where every time I press it, it's going to generate a random number, which will indicate the number of LEDs to light on the ring. So we'll see that a little bit later. I have one variable here, save number, which will, which will hold that random generated number. And then we get to the main setup. So I'm clearing the ring to make sure nothing is lit at the beginning. Uh, the tag switch is using the input pull-up resistors of the Arduino. I made a video on that if you want to check that out. And then we get to the EEPROM read, write, or get. And before we get into that, we're just going to cut here. I'm going to explain very quickly how EEPROM memory works on the Arduino. And then we'll be right back. All right, so let's have a quick overview of how the EEPROM memory works on the Arduino. Now, in the tutorial today, we're using the Arduino Nano. And its EEPROM has a size of 1,024 bytes that is available to us to write and read to. Now, when we want to read or write to a byte, we refer to it uh, by its number. So starting at byte number 0, 1, 2, and until we reach the last one. Now, each byte is, uh, has 8 bits. So prior to version 1.62 of the Arduino IDE, we can only write a value up to 255 because the commands read, write, and update would only access one byte at a time. Now, with the newer version, you can write any size number you want and it will spread it out between bytes. So let's say 1,250 is a two byte number, but it would, ju would just start at the first byte you indicate, byte zero, and go on until it can write the whole number. Now, the new commands are dot .get, which is like a dot .read, and dot .put, which is like a dot .update. Now, the older commands are still available, but if you want to write a bigger number than 255, you need to use .get or .put for it to work. So there you go, quick overview. So now let's go back to the code and continue. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about how EEPROM memory works, uh, what I'm doing here, I'm checking at byte 256 or 256 if it's equal to 123. I'm using byte 256 as a flag to indicate that the code has been run on this Arduino before. Now, if it's not equal to 123, that means the first time we're running this code on this Arduino. And what we're going to do, we're going to write then at byte 256, we're going to write the value 123. So next time we run it, it will know that it's been run before and not go through this. And I put the saved number equal to zero because this is the first time we're running this code on this Arduino. Now, if it is equal to 123, the, I'm not writing, then I'm getting the information out of byte zero. Byte zero on the EEPROM will be used to save the randomly generated number and putting that value inside saved number. Now we get to the main loop. So if the saved number is not equal to zero, that means it got that information from the EEPROM then I'm clearing the number of LEDs. I'm using the saved number variable to determine how many LEDs should be lit on the ring. And I'm showing that. Now, if I click the tag switch, then I'm clearing the LEDs. I'm going through a cycle. This is just a fun animation before I show the random number of LEDs. Then I generate that number. So the saved number variable is now equal to a random uh, between 1 and 24. And then I clear the LEDs. I use that new saved number, which was randomly generated here to determine how many LEDs should be lit. I show. And at the end of that, I put this information. So this new saved number inside byte zero. And everything goes on and on. So when I cut power to all this, the saved number should be in byte zero. And when we go at the beginning and we check 
if a read of byte 256 is equal to 123 or 123, it should be because it's not the first time, then it will get that number from byte zero. So there you go. I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit confusing. Uh, like I always say, check out my website. Uh, the information is there. You can uh, read it at your own pace and get a better understanding how, how everything works. But hopefully you get a grasp. Um, I hope I explained it properly. Uh, so right now what we're going to do, we're going to cut and we're going to go test it out right now. All right. So I already uploaded code to the Nano right here. So let me plug it in and see what happens. All right, so as you can see, we already have LEDs that are being lit right now. That's because I already ran this code on this Nano and it's remembering uh, the last time I, I ran it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to generate another number. It goes through a cycle and there we go. So we have two blue LEDs now. So I'm going to remove power. That information should have been saved inside the EEPROM, putting the power back. And there we go. Now we're back to two. Let me do another one. Well, same one. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five green ones. So let me remove, put the power back. Let me wait a little bit more just to make sure power is out. And there we go. And there we go, one, two, three, four, five. So there you go, guys, that's the way it works. Uh, not all projects uh, need EEPROM memory or to remember something if the power goes out. But if your project uh, ever does, now you know, and it's pretty easy to do. Hopefully my explanation wasn't too confusing to you guys. Uh, but uh, yeah, so very useful and very easy. So there you go. So let's go back to the main camera and wrap things up. All right, so that'll do it for today, guys. Hopefully you found this interesting and helpful. Uh, I remind you, if you want more information, don't forget to check out my website. I got all the information there, library used and all that stuff, if you want a copy of the code. And as always, if you like my videos, please subscribe, thumbs up, all that cool stuff. And yeah, so until next time, my name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.